It is my great delight and pleasure. Uh, we haven't seen Tom Stammen. Usually he comes on Wednesdays. January the 24th, was that? 25th of 2017 was the last time he was before a LifePoint crowd. And uh, he is a man after God's own heart. He's going to, we're, now I'm just going to tell you this. So those, how many have never heard Tom Stammen? Would you just raise your hands? Okay, so we got a few. You're in for a treat. Here's some things that he's going to, yeah, well, oh well. Uh, here's some things that are going to happen, okay? He's going to get up. He's going to minister. He is on a timetable. He literally travels about, uh, speaks about 360 out of 365 days a year. So he's moving. He got to our place last night at well after midnight, coming from another engagement, and he's got to hit the road. He's got to fly back to Honduras, right? You're hitting, getting ready to head back. So he stopped in here, uh, had this on his calendar for a while. He is going to prophesy to everybody in the room, okay? If you want it, you should want it. Bible says not to despise prophesying, so, so don't. Uh, and he's very highly accurate, but he's a man that loves God. We are not going to re receive a speaker's offering, per se. He's going to receive an offering at the end of his presentation, okay? Everybody get that? So I want you to be listening to God, hear God, okay? And let's bless him and his efforts all over the, all over the planet. Would you welcome Reverend Tom, Prophet Tom Stammen, a man of God. I don't say test, uh, we, no testing. I get too many tests. Blessing, blessing. Okay. Too much pitch. Blessing, blessing. Speaking of pitch, my dad was a roofer. I really looked up to him. <laughs> Turn your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. So good to be here today. So good it's not snowing. I agree with you, Pastor Tommy. I'm from Minnesota. We are the one state that prays for global warming every day. It's not working, trust me. First Peter chapter 2 ties into your first song, and uh, pretty amazing how that flows, is going to flow together. It says this, chapter 2, verse 8, the very end, they stumble because they disobey the message. That's them, okay, which is also what they were destined for. But what about those who obey the message? And God has a destiny for you, and here's your destiny. Look at verse 9. But you are a chosen people or generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession. You may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hallelujah. God, help us to know who we are in our identity in Christ. Big things being taught. It's awesome, but we need to walk that out in Jesus' name by faith. Amen. Amen. Take out your pen and paper or your cell phone, iPad, Kindle, neighbor's shirt, whatever you got. But if you just listen, you will forget 99% of what I say. So you got to take notes. The Bible says write the vision, make it plain. If you don't know how to write, draw pictures. I'm okay with that. Just don't draw pictures of me, please. Appreciate that. So, what we're destined for, point number one is this. You have a destiny. Repeat it for me. I, say I. I. Have, say have, a destiny. destiny. In fact, Ephesians 1 says you have a predestiny. We won't get into the doctrine of that, but the point is, you have a destiny. You are born to accomplish things. How many can say amen? amen? You're not born just to survive. I know country boys will survive, but you're born to do something great for the kingdom. How many can say amen? amen. God's name in Spanish, Señor Todo Poderoso, Omnipotente. He is all-powerful. He is omnipotent, which has two meanings. Omnipotent means all-powerful. It also means all-potential. Write that down. The all-potential God lives in you. Stop thinking little. Amen. Think big. Amen. Here's what God told me. My name is Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Of all the names my mother could have picked. Why not Peter or Paul or James or John? Thomas. Doubting Thomas. <laughs> One day I was having a doubt time. I know you don't have that here. And God said, O.T. of little faith. O.T. of little faith. <laughs> now, how many married people here have a spouse? And how many men marry the best looking woman you could get? Oh, yeah. Oh. Sure. I'm not saying how you should, how you should answer, just, yeah. just yeah. asking the question. Okay. And um, how many married someone different than you? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many glad you're not penguins? Like, you're my brother and my wife. I mean, <laughs> penguins, they, all, they all look the same to me. I'm sure there's a difference. I can't tell. But, anyways, um, usually in marriage, there's one person that's the gas pedal, and the other one's the brake. <laughs> Which one are you? Which is, the, the problem with my, 
The problem with my wife and I is we're both gas pedals. This is not good. So I have a dream. I have a dream. That could be a sermon. Somebody should write that, I have a dream. Oh, a Martin Lutheran guy. Wrote that one. It's good stuff here. Come on, take notes. And uh, so I have a dream to build cities. My wife has a dream to build a hospital. What a hospital cost? Five, ten million dollars. I went, that's kind of spendy, sweetie. Can you like drop it down a bit? No, don't steal my dream. Amen. I met a guy one time at the airport in LAX, and uh, I said, you're a Christian, aren't you? Just big guy, had muscles on his eyeballs, he was huge. He said, as a matter of fact, I am. I said, how can you be a Christian and wear a Pittsburgh Steeler jacket? <laughs> you like them? Well, the Bible says, don't, thou shalt not steal her. <laughs> Come on, read your Bible. It's deep, it's deep stuff, man. Hey, you, you, be nice. you don't have to be, you're bigger than me. You eat whatever you want, right? Okay, so you have a great destiny. So my wife has a destiny. When she was young, she said, I want to be a doctor. She became a doctor. I'm a dur. <laughs> my son, when he was nine years old, said, Dad, I want to be a lawyer. How many can use a lawyer in the family? Amen. I said, okay, sounds good to me. Age 24, he passed two bar exams. When I was 24, I passed a bar exam too, but I wasn't a Christian. <laughs> Somebody asked me what I thought about AA. I said, I think it's for quitters. <laughs> you quitter. Right. Okay. I, I don't, I, he preaches better than me. His wife preaches better than me. I'm here to make them look good. We want you back next week. We don't want that guy. Right. Right. Destiny. Say destiny. destiny. When you wake up in the morning, what do you say? Hey. Good morning, Lord. Or good Lord, it's morning. Do you wake up and say, I have Destiny. Write this down and say, I am unstoppable. I will put no boundaries on my life. I'm 57 years old. I'm getting older. How many are getting older? At 57, at 50, exactly. At 57, usually I'm not bragging, just speaking the truth. How many of you are okay to speak the truth? When I work out at the gym, I'm usually the strongest guy in the gym on almost every time I work out at 57. Especially when I work out at Curves. <laughs> I pretty much can beat out every chick. It's pretty amazing. People used to ask me, how much can you bench? Now they ask me, how old are you? <laughs> but I'm not letting my age stop me. Write this down. Age is mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. Satchel Page. And we limit ourselves. We, we talk big. We talk faith big. But our actions are so little. So we don't really, we, we say we believe it, but we don't act it out like we believe it. can't hear you. There's, you have unlimited opportunities. Don't pray for a job. Pray for an opportunity. Job. So I'm so glad you started a business. Yes. yes. Job stands for J-O-B, just over broke. You're a child of God. We've been adopted in the Jewish family. How many can say amen? We'll talk about that later. But how do you think? As a man think, it's so easy. I'm poor. I'm a loser. I'm getting old. I can't. I can't. Some people have cancer. Most people have, I can't, sir. I can't serve. I can't succeed. You're in America. If you, if you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere in the world. If you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere since God created the universe. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. You can still succeed. How many can say amen? amen? You got destiny. Say amen. amen. How many parents have children? Well, that's a parent. How many have, children have great destiny? Do you speak that? Yes. My granddaughter was born. My daughter called me up and says, Dad, all the nurses agree that, that, that Alexa is the smartest baby in the nursery at one day. How do you monitor that? One day. One day. She'd be the two-day babies. She's now, well, when she was um, in first grade, she skipped two grades. Because by fourth grade, she's reading, um, uh, scoring the high 90s at a sixth grade reading level. She reads 35 books a week. She's going to be a doctor. I call her Dr. Alexa. <laughs> if you come to Honduras and you ask these children we took in that were, that were orphans, that lived on the streets, that were sold into trafficking, all kinds of horrible stuff, and you ask them what they want to be, what are the three most common occupations? Doctor and lawyer and engineer. Very good. They don't want to just survive. They're staminites. And they will succeed. We get them from the dumps, and two years later, if you give them ugly clothes, they will not wear them. 
We don't wear that. We used to wear that. We don't wear that now. We're staminates. How many can say hallelujah? hallelujah. We have destiny. Amen. You got destiny. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. You got destiny. Amen. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. You got destiny. Amen. Look at one more neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. Say, neighbor. Amen. You're cute. I don't know why people laugh at that one, but it's kind of funny. Now, as I preach, I stop in the middle and pray for people because you got destiny. I'm going to pray for that man in the suit. Why don't you come on up here in the tan suit? He's over here. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, yeah, before the rapture. I want three to five people to come stand by him. Who's going to come stand by him? For sure, Pastor. Anybody else? Put hands on him. I'm going to pray for him. Come on, big man. Father God, I pray for this man to preach the gospel, to get many people saved. That he'll do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Then he watches people like Pastor Tommy Roberts or T.D. Jakes. He'll say, you know what? The same Jesus in them lives in me. The same Holy Ghost that's in them lives in me. Yeah. I pray he'll preach the gospel. I pray he'll start businesses. I pray, God, for that Jewish anointing to come upon him in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You know that many people that, that are from Africa are Jewish? Do you know that? They're from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And God, they spread all through Africa. And I pray, God, for that Jewish anointing in business, mm -hmm. in finances. Mm -hmm. I see that beautiful church you want to build. It's not going to come down from heaven. It's going to mm -hmm. come from people mm -hmm. that are touched by heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Use this man. Use his mind. Retirement, out of the question. Living a narcissistic, selfish life, no way. Let him be the most giving, serving, helping, encouraging person. Let him build up the pastor and build up other people. Let him be a daddy to those who never had a daddy. In Amen. Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 What do you think about that? And thanks for analyzing me. Because <laughs> uh, you were. So I got you first. <laughs> that way you can stop analyzing me. Okay. Just letting you know. Amen. That's good stuff. But you. Say, but you. You know, the word but changes everything. They were destined for, but you. You say to someone, you're beautiful, but. Pastor's going to give you a million dollars today, but. Um. You know, the word but just pretty much nullifies everything. Whatever you said before, but, is nothing. You were destined for destruction, but. Mm -hmm. Amen. You were destined for destruction. But how many of you know God's changing your life? Amen. Listen, just because you've always been poor doesn't mean you'll always be poor. That's right. Amen. Just because you've always been sick doesn't mean you're always going to be sick. Yes. See, don't let your past stop your future. Amen. I was always poor, but. You know my nickname growing up? Tight Wad Tom. Some of my family still thinks I'm that way because I don't buy my brothers and sisters and nephews and nieces presents. We give presents to orphans. It's good. Oh, See, so what they, what my parents made uh, a year at, as, a, as a master's degree, that's what we give away every month. Mm -hmm. wow. But I was cheap, but, I, but I'm not cheap anymore. I, I live to give. Amen. My wife and I, we decided that we didn't believe in tithing anymore. We did the backwards tithe. Yeah. How many have heard of the reverse tithe? And what is a reverse tithe? You know what that is. Yeah. Get, live on 10, give to nine. But then we made too much money. We felt kind of guilty. So we started living on 1 or 2%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Kenneth Copeland does. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee he does. Mm -hmm. I can't, can't, can't. But, right. but things can change. Amen. There's a guy who was in wrestling. But before he was, he was a, a puny guy. He was a little guy. 98-pound weakling. Just not good at anything. He joined wrestling. And became one of the two or three people that won the NCAA wrestling four years in a row. He became a pastor, and he's now in Algeria. And, when, and my goal in life was to raise up Olympic athletes, even though I don't know any Olympic athletes. But his brother's on the Olympic committee. And our goal is to go to Algeria, uh, put up a building, a wrestling room, because Muslims like to wrestle, among other things. Okay, but they like to wrestle, and as a way to go in there and um, train them in wrestling, Bring them food to that refugee camp of 150,000 people. And also bring, can't tell you on tape or YouTube, but it could be a surprise. Mm -hmm. amen. A good surprise. How many dream big, say amen? Yeah. See, well, realistically, I understand realistically. Right, right. I'm a pragmatist. Mm -hmm. I understand Proverbs. But you know what? Think beyond realistic. Yes. Yes. Now, not stupid thoughts like, I'm going to play for the Vikings someday. Ain't going to happen. You're not going to play for the Vikings. <laughs> Sorry. God bless you. I know you have a lot of faith, but you know, that... Young, pretty girl in the blonde hair, she's not going to play football for the Vikings. <laughs> and this was like a volleyball team in the Vikings or something, okay? It's so probably not going to happen. So people have like crazy thoughts that are never going to happen. But there's things that can happen. Absolutely. A little bit beyond you. Think beyond you. And David shot, when, when um, uh, Jonathan shot that arrow, don't know, go further ahead. 
It's, it's beyond that. And we, we, we limit God. We say we don't. We believe we don't, but we do. We do by our actions. Yes. Does that make sense? So I've always been poor, but I've never succeeded. But, hey, it's a new life. Amen. Every day is a new day. My wife's a doctor, and I don't have a lot of patience. Uh, yesterday I was in Connecticut, flew to Atlanta, and then got delayed. Got into Cedar Rapids, had to drive to Decatur, Illinois, then drive afterwards. I drive fast. I am German Autobahn. <laughs> I do not have patience. I find, drive as fast as I can without getting a ticket. I know that offends people, but I have, a lot, I have places to go. Okay. I have a lot of patience, but my wife's a medical doctor. She has a lot of patience. Yes. <laughs> she really does. But and she, was from, she came from a third world nation, but became a doctor in Poland. She's very polished in Polish. <laughs> then she moved to North Carolina to learn English. <laughs> wow, she got bad counseling. So I do love the all stuff there. Yes. I was down in Texas last week. I had to talk slow. I preached one sermon two days. <laughs> down in Texas. I, lo I love Texas. Wow. I, can, I can drive in Texas at the same time because I'm from Texas. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's keep going here. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to see who's going to get offended by that one. It's usually three or four. Like, right. so, so God has a great destiny for you, but... Quit looking backwards, start looking forward. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. I can't, can't, can't. You know, God can change things just like that. God can give you confidence. He can give you faith. He can give you boldness. And write this down, he can give you opportunity. Amen? Amen. Amen. So no matter what's happened in the past, but there's something new going to happen. Yeah. How many here believe that? Say amen. 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 Well, I'm going to pray for this young man in the red hoodie who's engaged to the lady next to him. Come up here, buddy. And uh, you bring your sweetie pie with you. Stand by your man. It could be a song. <laughs> now, notice how he waited for her to stand up. Oh. I think it's romantic, not because he's afraid. <laughs> okay, right, right. <laughs> bring my wife with me. I'm scared. Guys, come stand up by him. Guys, men. Yes. Real men. Okay, any kind of men. All right. <laughs> and I called you up because you have incredible destiny. I need to see you one day. Actually, coach. Could be a sport, could be in business, could be just coaching people in life. I pray for him to be the most kind, loving man, husband, as an example, that people have been married for 20 years and are like, I remember when I had a marriage like that. That whatever you did to get her, you'll do to keep, keep her, in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. They'll be honest and loyal and faithful. I pray you put a fire in his heart to make a difference. I pray God you'll get the degree he needs to do, get whether it's a bachelor's or a master's degree, or even further than that. But God let, him, God let him always give you all the glory. You know you think too much, you know that? You analyze too much. He's been studying me the whole meeting, kind of like the other guy. Where's he chewing gum? You swallowed it. <laughs> I believe this. I believe if you learn and find good people to teach you investing, you could be a multimillionaire. It's probably going to be in real estate. That's where the money is. So you've got to pray for him to be open to that. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. I can give you names of people, and if you'll listen and learn, they can teach you how to be a multimillionaire in real estate. And they started young. You can start young. I pray he'll succeed. Let him not sell out his family for money, but let him have a lot of money to help out other families. In Jesus, teach him what it means to give so he can receive to give more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Treat her like a queen. She deserves it. Is that right? That's right. Give him a hand. Cute couple. Give him a hand. Amen. <laughs> By the way, your fiance, she thinks too much too. You need to relax a little bit. You make me nervous. And she reads into things, bro. Don't wag your head either way. Just sit there like you don't know what I'm talking about. Her face is turning beet red. Okay. All right. But you. Say you. You. Which is me, I, you, we, us. Are a royal. Say royal. Yes. royal. So write down the word royal. Not from Kansas City. That's from Matt next week. Kansas City royals. You're, ro you're royalty. Yes. How many are sitting next to a king? I'm going to sit next to a queen. Amen. Yeah, that's just figurative. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Jesus is called king of um, kings. Uh, Sacramento kings. kings. <laughs> I like sports. Uh, my favorite basketball team is the Minnesota Timber Puppies. <laughs> Made the playoffs for the first time since John the Baptist was alive. <laughs> so I did a study last year to find out who's the most responsible team in the NBA actually is in Milwaukee because the buck stops there. 
And there's a nugget of truth from people from Denver. <laughs> Not everybody's going to get every joke. It's okay. Don't feel bad. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Do you think royalty? Uh, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. As people come on a mission trip, you need to come with me. Uh, can't afford it. Can't afford it. Oh, I'm so sorry your God's so broke. I don't know. I, I, I don't know about you, but I serve the Jewish God. That's why God made retail. That's why God made gentle. Somebody has to pay retail. Hello? Can't afford it, can't afford it, can't afford it. I say, if you can't afford it, then just get a Chevy. <laughs> Drive it to the levee. It might be dry. What does that song even mean? See, if you walk out, you miss it, bro. Just stay in here. Right. <laughs> Look at the guys on that show from Louisiana. What's that? Oh, whatever. I forget the name of the guy. Anyways, so how do you think? One idea with a plan and walking out can make you very successful and very wealthy. How many can say amen? amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Royalty. I used to pray this prayer. You ever pray this? God, help me save money, save money, save money. I got it from my, my dad, bless his heart. Save money, save money, save money. Cut back. Cut back expenses. People get thrilled when they pay their electric bill. This is America. It's not that big a deal. It's not really a big miracle. I can't hear you. Amen. How about paying 100 people's electric bill? Right. That's a big miracle. Right. Amen. How about providing housing for people? That's a miracle. You paying your gas bill is not that much of a miracle. That's right. Not in America. Right. Right. I can't hear you. Yes. You, you eating every day is not a much of a miracle in America. Yeah. Nobody dies of starvation in America. No. Oh, they're going hungry. Well, you haven't been to a third world nation. That's what hunger is. They die from starving. In America, we mostly die from eating too much. How many can relate to that? Amen. If I'm not careful, I could be on both sides of the family tree. Yeah. Old thou mountain, be removed. And I don't have a problem not eating. I have a problem eating too much. How many can relate? Amen. Right? And so the point is, we are so blessed in this country. Yes. We're royalty. Yes. Even the poorest of you, are you listening? Yeah. Is wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't have a job, you're still wealthier than people then, that work 60, 70 hours a week in third world nations. You're wealthier than 80%. How many have a car? What percent of people have a car in the world? Right? How many have air conditioning in the summer, not the winter? Right? How many three meals a day, whether you need it or not? How many are going to die if you don't get out of here at 12? Don't raise your hand. You raised your hand. Not the time. We're blessed. Say blessed. blessed. But we think so little. Yeah. Well, I make 40 grand a year. That means after taxes, I have 80 cents. No. I mean, I, I, I can't. I only make so much. Here's the problem. People have one stream of income. Yes. They don't think Jewish. So write this down. If you're single, you should write, have three streams of income. If you are married... You should have seven streams of income. Whoa. If you're building orphanages, we have about 15 or 20 streams of income. Because we've got so many, we have 80 employees. We've got to have different streams of income. Do you think Jerry Seville has one stream of income? No, he doesn't. Do you think Kenneth Copeland has one stream of income? No, he doesn't. He's got oil wells. Hallelujah. Okay? God wants to develop streams of income. But write this down. If you're not looking or expecting... You won't find them. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. See, my wife and I, we don't need any of your money to live. I don't need, I'm not, the offering today is not for my wife and I. Mm -hmm. I don't need your money. I need your money to give. Right. I need your money to help orphans because my wife and I have a, an Airbnb. And our Airbnb not only pays all our bills, it's double what we need. Our own home makes money. Amen. That's good. We rent out seven bedrooms. Five of, I have a are rented out. We meet people all around the world. Come stay at our place. And we all get along. In one month we had Hindus and we had Buddhists and Mormons and Christians and Filipinos and Muslims and lesbians. And, and, and we all got along. I'm calling the United Nations. Come to our house. Because usually every week we have that. But we, we, we look for, for opportunities. Because we're royalty. Say amen. My wife, um, she could make 400,000 years a doctor. She gave it up to help orphans. She, when you go to Honduras to come with us, she's the boss. She has 80 employees. She is La Jefa, the boss. I am El Esclavo, the slave. <laughs> How many men know what I'm talking about? I may be bigger than her, but she is a woman. Of course, that's her country. or She was born in Peru, but that's her culture. She's smart, but in America, in my country, guess who the boss is? Absolutely, my wife. But the point I'm trying to make is... Um, do you invest? 
Right. Hey, write down the 80-10-10 rule. See, um, being financially blessed isn't just supernatural. There's natural things, too. Yes, there is. And part of the natural thing is the 80-10. You've all heard of the 80-10-10 rule, right? 80% yes. bills, 10% God, 10% invest. Yes. If you're not investing, you'll never get ahead. You have to have passive incomes. Kings have to think not what pays my bills. They have to think what pays the bills for my country. Kings have to think different. If you listen to me preach, I never talk about my needs, what I need, because you know what? I don't need what you can give. I need help for orphans. That makes sense. So God wants you to refocus from me, 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 that's how slaves think, me, 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 to I'm a king. I need help to help people. Can't hear you. God wants you to get you off focus from just your family and, and even, even the church to the kingdom of God. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. So I'm focused not just in, on even what we're doing in IMI. We're focused on helping other people succeed in other ministries. How many can say amen? amen? So my friend from Mexico calls me and says, I want to build a city. I said, how can we partner? I said, I'll go dollar for dollar. I don't have the money, but I believe God for that. We'll, we'll, build, we'll build a city. See? Because we believe that God is not limited. We say we don't believe he's limited, but if you're going, like, I have a salary, this is how much I get paid, I, won't, I don't make anymore, I gotta cut back, I gotta be cheap, I gotta, you know, go to, you know, God bless goodwill, I gotta go this. Because you're thinking limited. You're not thinking as a king, you're thinking as a slave. So if you think you're gonna super succeed at 40 hours a week, it's probably not gonna happen. Successful people don't work 40 hours. I work 40 hours in the first 2.5 days of the week. I work 360 days a year. I'm not I'm complaining. I got orphans to feed. It's okay. I'm not being a baby about it. But what kind of people work more than 40 hours a week? What kind of occupations require more than 40 hours a week? Help me. What occupation? Doctors, 60, 80 hours a week. What, lawyers, what else? Huh? Some nurse, Farmers, definitely. Farmers. Uh, entrepreneurs. And if they're farmers, they're entrepreneurs. What other people work more than 40, 60, 80 hours a week? Who, who? Ministers do. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody calling up? Uh, Pastor Tommy, I want to kill myself. Oh, sorry, you called at the wrong time. I just put in my 40. Give me a call next Tuesday at 3. Oh, I'm on vacation. Are you kidding? Right? Okay, I'll be there. How many times he had to give up an evening because he had to go help somebody? But you're still missing the number one occupation that works more than all those occupations. What is it? Moms. So everybody write down Moms. Moms work more than 40 hours a week. Yeah. That's true. Can you imagine your kids saying, I'm really hungry. I put in my 40. <laughs> Help yourself to the fridge. <laughs> it's high up. Use a chair and climb. <laughs> How many parents have climbers in the family? Just climb and find cookies and all kinds of stuff. And like, How'd you get there? I didn't need nothing. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Can you imagine your little kid stinketh? <laughs> Mommy, he stinks. Put in my 40. <laughs> Take him outside, use the hose. <laughs> Make sure he's clean when he comes back in. But it's cold out. I know. Go really fast. Saves on the water bill. <laughs> Can you imagine a mom saying that? It's called child abuse. <laughs> now, now, I'm going to throw something at you. Okay. Um, if you do what you like to do, you never have to work. Amen. I have a job. I well, don't have a job. Have a destiny. Yes. When you get up in the morning, do you go to your job or do you go to your destiny? That's good. How many here can't wait to get out of bed in the morning? Amen. 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 Okay, only three people. Let's throw that one away. <laughs> Trying to turn anybody off, right? <laughs> Sleeping is really overrated. <laughs> Give as much. Give those you can see. Go on and really have a place. But people, um, they live for their vacation. They live for their days off. So write this down. What if, this is a big thought. What if you got paid for what you like to do? Right. So that way when you have time off, you don't need to go spend money to have fun because you're having fun making money. Right. I can't hear you. That's good. That's good. So here's what I want you to do. Take out your pen and paper, write down three jobs you would like to do whether you got paid or not because you just like to do it. Three jobs you can't wait to do. What if you could think of ways to make money that are fun? Right. That's right. I can't hear you. That's right. For example... Um, I like to go fishing. I never catch any. I'm from Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes, one fish. <laughs> and my wife caught it. But I do like to go fishing. What if you take a vacation, but you own the vacation place? 
and you go there maybe a couple times a year, but the other 50 weeks, you rent it out, and it makes money, so you can have a vacation for free. How about that? How about that? That's what we do. In Iowa. How many have ever been to Iowa? Well, I am in Iowa. Shoot. West Union, Iowa. Can you believe it? High Hills. The Little Turkey River. And Rock Out Carpets. You've been there. That makes us money. And it's fun. Well, that'll never happen for me. You're right. It won't happen for you. So don't even pray about it. Oh, that was the devil. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right? Think of ways that you can earn income that's fun. Right? And you get to tithe on it, but it's fun. Rather than I hate my job, but at least I'm paying the bills. Mm. This is America. You don't have to have a job like that. Mm. I'm going to say praise God. Amen. This is not a communist, socialistic country. Right. You get to pick what you want to do. If you hate your job, you picked it. Right. I can't hear you. Amen. You hate your what? Your li what's it, life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Freudian split. No. You hate your life. You picked it. Right? right? You're making choices. Right. You're kings and queens. Say amen. Right? Amen. Do you know that the average Jewish person makes 150000 a year? The average Christian of any denomination makes about 50000 a year. And the average born-again, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost person makes about 25000 a year. It's because of how we think. As a man thinketh, so is he. We think, I have a lot of friends that are financial planners. One spoke yesterday at our conference. He said, Christians have what's called the hope method for retirement. They hope to God there'll be something there. Because they sure didn't plan for it. Can't hear you. Yeah, amen. If your whole retirement plan is based on social insecurity, oh God, help you. Uh, just give me the 666. I need social security. Now, I hope that doesn't happen, but it could. It's all, you know, it could happen. But you know what? We need to be like royalty. Say amen. amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Does that? Is that foreign thinking to you? No. What, what, what religion is buying up the earth? Muslims are. What, what ethnic group is buying up the earth? Chinese. Who's not buying up the earth? I mean, you ever go to gas stations and hotels? Who owns them? And Americans. People that came here for the opportunity. Who's working for them? We are. Not against them. They're just smarter than we are. Because they're entrepreneurs. So I believe that God is shifting the church from just Working for someone where they tell you what to do, where they own you, where you can't witness, you can't take time off, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't listen to Christian music, you can't talk about what you want to talk about. To we own the business, and we can talk whatever we want to talk about. How many can say hallelujah? Amen. If you don't like it, just find another job. Amen. That's right. In Honduras, we have 80 employees. Guess what? We have mandatory Bible studies. If you don't come, we just fire you. Amen. You don't have to believe. You don't have to do anything, but you have to come. Well, that's illegal. Not in Honduras. It's illegal here. It's not legal in Honduras. That's mean. No, it's good. There's other jobs you can work at, like sitting home doing nothing and starving. Or you can come work and hear the Bible. All right. Amen. I don't know. If you don't like it, it's okay. It's Honduras. <laughs> All right. We're going to pray for a lady. And um, I'm going to pray for the lady in the back. She's got a gray shirt, uh, kind of blondish hair. Well, it changes sometimes. But uh, come on over. I'm going to pray for you. And bring some of your friends or family. And uh, just up here as fast as you can for the rapture. Okay. All right, some ladies want to come stand by her. We got some pretty powerful prayer ladies. You're one of them there, and I know this one is here. And what are you doing down there? Stand up. No pressure. Let's pray for her. Amen. You haven't had the easiest life in the church. In fact, if I was to pick someone who's had top ten hardest life in the church, you won won the top ten awards. But you didn't quit and you didn't give up, and things are a whole lot better now than they used to be. Sometimes you have flashbacks, nightmares, fears tied to the past. You know, you didn't get a great start in life, but you can have a great finish. It's not how you start the race, it's how you finish the race. Yeah. And you're going to finish strong. This is powerful. And he's learning to trust people. Because at one time he said, I will trust nobody. Especially of the male gender. But God, you're healing her heart. And she's better now. She's being strengthened. Yes, it's true the devil came like a, like a big um, excavator and stole from you. But whatever he steals, he's got to pay back double for your trouble. Or seven times, Proverbs 6.30. So let it be mighty in the kingdom. Bring many ladies to church. Encourage them. Even helping girls come out of sexual abuse and molestation and trafficking and rescue them from darkness and bring them in the light. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What do you think about that? Would that work? Give the Lord a hand. Amen. All right, here we go. Royal priesthood. 
Next key. We're priests. I was raised in a certain denomination. I'm not going to tell you which one. First Catholic in the Bible was Joshua, son of a nun. John was a Baptist. Um, priest means you have every right to go right to the throne of God. Every right. It's interesting. It says that we can go to the throne of God boldly asking for mercy. Yeah. You ever read that? It's one thing to go boldly when you're asking God help me help orphans or win souls. But to go boldly asking for mercy. How many here have ever made a mistake? Say, uh-huh. How many have ever been pulled over at least once? I was driving through Illinois through cornfields. Cornfields. Amazing. Oh, shucks. Kind of corny. And I, it was night. I was kind of happy. I was driving 72 in a 55 late at night. And a car pulls right behind me in the cornfields. I went, oh, no, this is not good. Sure enough, I got pulled over. Hi, officer. What can I do for you? I'm praying for mercy. What can I do for you? He says, well, you were going fast. I said, yeah, I realize that. I'm so excited. I just got back done doing a meeting. I raised money for orphans. We got custody of 60 children in Honduras. And we just really love our kids. And I have a safe house in Wisconsin. I do. He says, where? I told him. He said, my parents live 10 minutes from there. I went, there you go. So we want to help girls, and we raise money for that, and that's why I was just a little bit too excited. You're right. I shouldn't have been. He said, I'm a Christian. I can't imagine giving a ticket to a guy who helps orphans. So I'm going to let you go. I went, hallelujah. <laughs> and I am telling you the truth. I didn't speed for 10 miles. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't go 72, but I did go above the speed limit. I'll tell you that right now. I drove seven hours that night, cut it down to 6.2. Anyway. Mercy, say mercy. mercy. You're a priest. You get to go to God. We have not because we... Yes. What are you asking for? Take out your pen and paper, write down three things you're asking for. Now, most Christians pray for fuzzy things. Fuzzy wuzzies. Well, I pray that revival will come, whatever that means. Right. I pray that I'll, you know, feel better. What do you mean feel better? I pray that people will get along in the world. That's probably not going to happen. I pray that um, and they, they, the, my, the Vikings will win. Um, you know, that's a, okay, right? I, they pray for things that are fuzzy. So write this down. Pray specifically for things that have zero to do with people's free choice. I can pray for you to have faith, but that doesn't mean you're going to get faith. I should still pray that. But some of your prayers need to be prayers that are specific so when God answers it, you can go, he did it. Right. So take out your pen and paper, write down, what is the most awesome, specific prayer you prayed and it happened? And half the people look at me like deer in the headlights. Like, I can't think of anything. Which is probably why people don't pray. Because they don't have any testimonies. Right? So what do you pray for? I'll give you an example. Um, three things I hate, people going to hell, orphans who are dying, and girls sold in sex trafficking. Those are three things that I hate. So my wife and I begin to pray that we buy land down south. I'm like you. I like south. Uh -huh. South is good. Yes. Sweat is good. Yes. Freezing is not good. Yes. Freezing is not good. Amen. I know you like to freeze. That's great. I don't like it. So I pray for land. Down south. I'm talking about two years. Land down south. Somewhere, Lord, down south, down south. Not South Dakota. No, about down south. We prayed, and God opened up a door, and we bought property, our ministry, not us, but in the southern tip of the United States. Wow. But if you were to Google right now, you don't have to, Google the most southern city in the United States. We are 11 miles south of the most southern, in the 50 states. And the land is cheaper than Iowa. Wow. It's so remote, we had to put a road in. It does not exist on Google Maps. But what it's next to exists. See, and we got a great deal. Perfect for a safe house, because in that state, um, the way they get rid of little girls after they're done with them is they throw them in the lava pits. So we're going through the permitting process to do that. We asked specifically, down south, my, and my business partner from Boeing said, do you know you have the most southern property in the 50 states? I went, you know what the odds of that are? One in 300 million people. <laughs> 350, right? So I'm trying to say is this. 
Don't get jealous when somebody gets their prayers answered because they prayed. And maybe you didn't. I can't hear you. Yes, we need to pray. Oh, God, move. God, show up. I know. Oh, he's already here, right? That's you. Right? But you need to pray things that are tangible, that you can put your finger on. That you can tell people, look, I have a testimony. Here is what God did. I prayed and he answered. Right? So what has he done for you? You're a priest. You should go right into the throne room of God and ask. Ask for mercy. Ask for help. How many here have asked God for at least a million dollars? Raise your hand. Well, that's pretty good. About nine of you. Okay. Well, that's why the rest of you ain't going to get it. <laughs> what would you do with it? Tithe? Huh, you're probably not going to get a million dollars then. Why don't you say, God, if you give me a million, I'll give you 90%. How about that one? Right. Right. Well, all, all eight of you. Okay. You want to get that church? It's not going to come just by an angel from California. Okay. Or Anaheim. It's going to come through people. People that pray. God used me to be able to build that. Right? But you have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. God doesn't help you because he loves you. He helps you because you ask. And he loves you. Right? How many parents have children that ask? How many have children that bug you? Just pester you, drive you nuts? You're a wretch. You got checks in the checkbook. You're a wretch. Right? See, some people are pastors. Others are pastors. <laughs> Right? And they bug and they bug. Now we, work, we live around Amish people, they buggy me. And the reason why they buggy me because they horse around. I met their pastor last month. He was a German shepherd. Back to the point. Dude, you keep laughing like that, and you're going to be my friend for the rest of your life. Appreciate that. Wild thing. Wild thing. You called it out. It's your fault. You spoke it. So I pray for the guy in the tie. Here, brother, come up here. The cool hair, tie. Bring all your ties in the storehouse. All right. Why don't you come up here? We're going to pray for you. And I take it that's your bride over there. Stand by your man. No, no. You ready? What's your name, sir? Mario. Mario what? Garcia. Garcia. Some of my kids are named Garcia. All right. Who's a stand by him? Come on, folks. Shake a leg. Come on, Robin. You can stand up even though you're a girl. Pray for him. God, I pray for this man to be a great leader. A great leader. I pray God he treats his wife like a queen. Back massage every week. Don't mess it up. <laughs> nice vacations. I pray God for him to run businesses. Not just one. M multiple streams of income. God, he'll make good deals. Let him be a good negotiator. God, thank you he's in this church full of wild people, fired up for God. I'm glad he's here, God, to learn and to grow. Give him great wisdom to make great decisions. Raising the family. In Jesus' name, your kids think you are the coolest guy ever. And your wife likes your biceps, too. <laughs> you got the nice arms, man. You don't flex your muscles in front of me, do you? No. Yes, you do. <laughs> I don't want to know the details. No, 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 no. I don't want to even see that. <laughs> Disgusting. Anyways. And you're the type of guy that could bring about 50 people to church. You just got to kind of ask them. And he can speak. And God, he's a good communicator. And he's positive. He's a little romantic, too. Uh, right. <laughs> Mi amor, como está? <laughs> banga, banga. <laughs> she doesn't know what that means. But anyway. And so, God, we thank you for this man's heart. You, you watch things, and you study things, and you don't buy into things very easy, and you're, you're cautious. And like, well, I'm not going to give all my money until I know what's going on. I pray, God, send them to the nations. Put new forest fires in his heart. And when his wife's praying for him, even praying for his pillow, amen, they have God dreams that will wake up and go like, I'm excited to come to church because I see you preaching and ministering. You haven't experienced how exciting and refreshing it can happen when you minister and really minister to people. So God, let him be a king and a priest. Yeah. Let him make a whole lot of money, but let him also have a heart to give and serve and rescue people. You guys need to adopt. You need to adopt. You need to have like five or six kids, big house. We were <coughs> joking about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell a joke about it. Because <laughs> you're going to. You're going to. That's why God's blessed you. If you do that for him, you have more finances you can over, ever imagine. I mean, it's got to be like a five, six bedroom house with a beautiful view, maybe even a water on the property. It's an acreage, but it's for a bunch of kids in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. So Amen. you're not going to get out of debt for a long time, but you can make investments. Thank Amen. You. And he does have the guns too. <laughs> she has to help you take your jack. She has to help you take your jacket off. I can't get it off, sweetie. Pull that off there. How many are happy you're alive? Raise your hand. How many are glad you don't live in Nebraska? 
I saw a book on tourism in Nebraska. It was one page. It said, welcome to Colorado. And that state's going to pot. <laughs> Mile high stadium. Let's keep going here. All right. Uh, I got so many good points, but I'm running out of time. This is too much. This is a fun place to preach, by the way. So let's give you one more point because we're running out of time. Uh, special possession to declare praises. You're special. My mama said to me, You're special. And my middle name was Ed. I was special Ed. Pretty excited. I got a chance to preach in Tampa for the first time. You've been there? Yeah, pretty excited. Get to go get invited back uh, coming up in, uh, in May. Uh, I'm going to do a fundraiser down there and we're going to raise, sell corn for a buccaneer. Oh. So special. How many here married a special person? Say, look at your, look at your sweetie pie or, or our friend say, you're special. Those two young people back there, you guys are, be careful. Okay. <laughs> Don't talk when I'm talking or I'll call you out and embarrass you. No. Special. <laughs> you're chosen. Say chosen. chosen. Of the eight billion people that God created right now, you're special. So I fly a lot. Uh, there's a guy named Jack around here. Is that you, Jack? I was in an airport one time. My friend Jack walked by. I said, hi, Jack. <laughs> no, that's a joke. And anyway, but uh, of the 8 billion people, you're special. Do you know when you go through the airlines, it's called clear. Have you heard of clear? Mm-hmm. Okay, where they actually put your fingerprints. You don't even need your really even ID anymore. They go by, I go by my eyes. Mm. But just by my eyes. Oh, you're Tom Stam and da 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 etc. And that's how special you are and unique you are. Remember this. Only you can do what you can do. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Mm-hmm. No one can do what you can do. Mm-hmm. I wish I could sing like that man in the back there. Do you know that music is instrumental to success? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sing solo, solo nobody wants to hear me. <laughs> dance? You're talking about dancing? Yeah. There are white people here. We don't dance. <laughs> Have you ever watched white people try to dance? Uh, 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 like, okay, just play an instrument because you don't know how to dance. Right? I've been to Africa. They dance for every reason. Oh, there's a volcano. Let's just dance. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh! You keep confessing it, bro. It's not going good. It's all your fault, man. Yeah, there's economy destroyed because of an earthquake. It was... It's because of a fault. <laughs> Brand new, just for a few people get that select few. Okay. <laughs> Mining is boring. Um, let's keep going. So people think, well, if I don't do it, God will use somebody else. Mm. Not true. That's good. People think, well, God is sovereign. Whatever he wants to happen, happens. No. Not true. Not true. Not in this planet. Not true. Because no, he not gave true. the earth to men. He said, you are God. We're not God. You're like God, but you're going to die like men. But I, he gave the earth to men. That's why there's abuse mm-hmm. and starvation yes. and pain. One of my prophet friends said, whenever you see suffering, it's because somebody isn't obeying God. Right. Not yeah. totally true, but, but pretty much true. Okay? And so God wants to use you as a special treasure. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Well, I can only do one thing. No, you can't. You got this God who lives in you that is unlimited. How many here have better skills now than you did 10 years ago? How many are doing things now and getting paid for it you had no idea what to do 20 years ago? How many have improved yourself for the last 30 years? How many are glad you're alive? (laughs) See, you're a special treasure. We need you. By the way, if you don't like Pastor and his wife, you're a moron. Write that down. No. Uh, I mean, I was in Texas last week. I know some people, a guy named Shake. I oh, didn't see him, though. Um, I know some people that you know. And then, then, then up, up in Iowa, I got out of the car and went, Jesus, take the wheel. It's cold, right? And yet, he came here because God picked you. God picked you to be here. God picked you to be here. Yeah. See, being an usher isn't just, you know, oh, anybody can do it. There's good ushers and there's... Not so good ushers. Mm-hmm. Everyone here is important. Amen. 
right? I'm not important. You are important. Tú eres muy importante. You're very important. Yes. You got to know that. Amen. I don't have skills like so and so. You don't, but you do have skills. Yes. One thing good about the church, if you can fog a mirror, you can be a volunteer. <laughs> right? Amen. I have no skills. We'll find one. We will find a skill for you. You have multiple skills. Chosen, say chosen. chosen. I'll give you this little point, and then we'll wrap it up for my preaching, because you got the PowerPoint coming up. Very good, guys. Can you imagine being an orphan? Can you imagine that? I was sitting down with our teenagers two years ago and said, I'm going to tell you something that's going to probably make you cry, but I want you to hear me out, because when I get done, you're going to have a smile. I said, I can't imagine what it would be like to have my own mother drop me off and leave me to die at age five, which would happen. I can't imagine my own daddy breaking my leg, which happened to one of the kids. Or my own daddy taking a can of gasoline and pouring it on me and lighting me on fire, which happened to one of our boys. I can't imagine we like to be, you know, abused. We'll talk about a couple little kids here. Severely abused by my own mom and dad. I can't imagine. I'm sure in that, and one by one, they hung their heads in tears. I said, but let me tell you something. There's a reason why there's a caravan. Let me tell you something. Out of the 150,000 orphans in Honduras, Mama Teresa, my wife, we chose you. We chose you to be a Staminite. Mm -hmm. That you can be whatever you want to be. And by the grace of God, we'll find a way to send you to college, start a family. When they turn 18, we don't kick them out. They'll go back into prostitution or gangs. Yeah. We'll build them a house. That's good. That's good. We'll provide a job. They're family for heaven's sake. You don't kick out your kids at 18 if they can't make it. Come on. Can't hear you. Come on. My wife could be making 400 grand a year. No, she said, I'd rather save orphans and help kids and create jobs. She was destined. And you got a destiny. And you've been chosen. And you've been picked. And if you don't do it, it ain't getting done. I can't hear you. He'll use somebody else. No, he won't. It's only you. Only you can love your kids the way you love kids. Only you can be a witness to your group of people that you're an influence over. Only you. Only you. Only you have your skill set. But, 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 but. What do you have, motorboat? Yeah, but, 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 If you think that way, it's because you don't know how big God is. I can't hear you. Yeah, but I'm handicapped. Do you know there's a man in Africa who is paralyzed from the neck down, can't use hands, can't use feet. He's a multi-million, one of the richest people in this country because all he has is a brain, but he uses that brain. He owns supermarkets. He knows numbers. He knows how to hire people. He knows these things. All he got in a third world nation, no, there's no social security. There's no disability. There's no help. You just die. But he didn't die because he was chosen. Amen. How many can say chosen? chosen. Are you chosen? Amen. Not just theoretically. Do you know that in your gizzard? I am picked. Amen. Do your children know that? Only you can do what you can do. Mm -hmm. Only you can do what you can do. Amen. And so many people have been battered and beat down. They have faith in God and no confidence in themselves. That should not, faith doesn't stop in God. It should go to confidence in what you can accomplish. Somebody can say amen. You've been chosen. You're special. You're a treasure. Don't just know it theologically. Don't just know it right here. Get it down in your gizzard. Get it down in your gut and say, I am chosen. I am chosen. When I wake up in the morning, kids depend on me. And people say, you have a savior mentality, a savior complex. Call it what you want, but they depend on me. If I fail today, my kids don't get to eat. I have to succeed. I have to succeed every day. I don't work to pay my bills. I work to pay their bills. How many can say hallelujah? And you got a destiny. So stop thinking so little and embarrassing God. I can't hear you. Amen. You can't do what I can do. I can't do what you can do, but we can do what we can do. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. Bow your head, shut your eyes. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. Are you ready to meet God? Yes. God doesn't want anybody here to go to hell. Amen. You're destined for eternal life if that's what you want. I'm going to give you an opportunity in the count of three to give your life to Jesus. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, your destiny is not looking good. You give your life to Jesus, you have eternal, awesome things that are going to happen in your life. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus or come back to Jesus if you need to. Raise your hand on the count of three as high as you can. Are you ready? One, two, three. Raise your hand as high as you can. There's hands going up. Let me count the hands. 
Let me count the hands. There's one, two, three, four, five, six awesome people. Drop your hands. Put them on your heart. Everybody put your hands on your heart. Everybody pray. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Save me. Save. Forgive me. Forgive. Come in my heart. In my heart. Wash, away my Wash away my sins. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Jesus, is Jesus is Lord. He died for me. He rose from the dead. He's coming again. I want to follow Jesus every day for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand for those six awesome people. As we say in Honduras, bienvenidos al reino de Dios. Welcome to the kingdom of God.